Um, hi, welcome to Accelerating the Creation of Competitive Multiplayer Game, where today we'll be giving you a live look into Unity's end-to-end -end multiplayer solutions. For those of you who don't know, my name is Hirsch Bansel, Product Manager for Multiplayer and Dots, Samples and Education. Hi there, everyone. My name is Esteban Maldonado. I am a developer advocate that mostly represents multiplayer solutions. So happy to be here with you today. Just like Esteban said, we're both happy to be here with you today, just speaking to this diverse community of creators just in this room alone. Um, we hope by the end of this session, you will have successfully learned how to increment the iteration time of your competitive multiplayer game in Unity. Here's a quick overview of today's agenda. First, we'll briefly walk through the state of multiplayer in Unity 6, and then we'll jump straight into a live demo of this workflow, where we'll show you how to experiment quickly with multiplayer center and widgets, how to validate with play mode in the editor, deploy with, matchmake, with multiplayer hosting, and connect with matchmaking. Afterwards, we'll get you set up with the right resources so you can start your journey as quick as possible today, and then we'll field any questions you might have. So if that sounds good with you, let's move forward. Just to take a quick step back, we've made a lot of progress with bringing multiplayer tools to Unity 2022 LTS. That kind of allowed us to set a solid foundation for you in Unity 6. Today, you can leverage our high-performance editor netcode solutions, like netcode for entities, which is made on ECS for Unity, and deploy with Unity multiplayer hosting scalable infrastructure. We say we, um, unlocking these high-end multiple capabilities in your game will also allow you to build ambitious gameplay. And we love to say ambitious because of the constant need to build a large-scale world um, where it's important to maybe host a large number of players and factors such as precision and synchronization become pretty critical. And you can see exactly what I'm talking about in our sample, Mega City Metro, that constantly exchanges vast amounts of data between 128 plus players in action-based gameplay and is based on netcode for entities. Now, we didn't stop there. We continued to listen to your feedback and we know that the problem with multiplayer games gets more complex when you start connecting the services that keep them running. And oftentimes, this leads to wasting valuable resources and time choosing setting up, and operating throughout development. And that too, at the cost, focus on finding the fun in gameplay. Now, since shipping the preview in May, our team has been busy landing the remaining pieces that tackle these challenges head on. Our vision is simple. Provide an end-to-end -end solution that makes iteration deployment, and integration more reliable and faster than ever. With Uni6, you can now achieve all the things you see to the right that boil it down into six key promises. And I'll go quickly through them with you today. The first can be categorized into creative tooling with solutions in the editor. Here, you can quickly experiment with our solutions and validate multiplayer gameplay directly in the editor without leaving at all. Two, powerful ways to host your games. So this includes everything to ship resilient client-hosted games, but also server-hosted games. And three, ways to engage and connect your players and also provide safe communication. So it's essentially everything you need to get started. And so, with the release of Unity 6 just around the corner in October, there's no better time to take these multiplayer features and Unity 6 out for a test drive yourself. But for today, we'll be covering off a majority of these items you see on the screen with a specific focus on accelerating your competitive action multiplayer game in Unity. But you can definitely learn more about shipping resilient client-hosted games in the following session with my colleague Lucy. So let's get into it. We've broken down the demo into four steps. We'll walk you through the journey today with experimentation through to validation, deployment, and ultimately connecting players. But let's start with the first two steps that go hand in hand. 
Here, with multiplayer center and widgets, you get a curated list of multiplayer features and services to implement from a pitchable prototype through development. With multiplayer play mode and play mode scenarios, you can validate and test your gameplay in the editor, and all with up to four instances. We're going to show you this in a brand new project, but before I pass it off to Esmon to get into that, I just want to dive into a few key concepts um, for any level of networking. So historically, we've had many multiplayer games. From your home console to an arcade machine, we've been playing shared experiences by coming together on one device or one arcade machine. But what happens when you want to provide that same shared experiences to all your players, each on their own device? Well, we need some way of making sure that these devices are connected and communicating with each other constantly just so our players feel like they're all playing the same shared game. And so with that, there are three layers of code that work together to help establish that needed connection. And the first one is a gameplay layer, which I'm sure you're all familiar with. It combines everything related to rendering the world, UI, input, calculating physics, and so on. Then there's the netcode layer. This is the layer that takes the important data and notes from the gameplay layer that are, all that are relevant to the other players sharing the same experience. So that's everything about where's the player moving? Did they shoot yet or not? Which direction are they going in or which direction will they be in? Last but not least, there's the transport layer. The transport layer just takes the data from the netcode layer and splits into packets of data and send it to whomever should know. So think about the netcode layer as writing a letter, and the transport layer as the postal service that delivers on that letter or the message. What we're going to see shortly is this type of authority, client-hosted, where one of the devices acts as the owner or acts as the server or the host of the network session, and the other client would go ahead and join that session. And in this situation, the server is a device that basically hosts the state of the world and communicates it to the other connected clients, including its own instance. So if you're creating casual and cooperative multiplayer games, this is likely what you're going to use. But what happens if you're dealing with a much more complicated game, a more competitive game that cheat prevention is probably more important and your game is handling a lot more players? That's where a dedicated server approach comes into play. So here, when we have a dedicated server, the client is going to connect and join the session, but they're not going to be holding or they're not going to have authority over the other objects that are in that session. Instead, there's going to be a dedicated machine that is not a player that is going to communicate the state of the world to the participating clients. That's a very small but critical step in what we're going to be showing you shortly. And so with that, I'm happy to pass it off to Esteban to dive into the demo. OK. All right, then. Uh, so we saw a few of those theoretical concepts for whenever you're starting out in your multiplayer development journey. But let's bring them to, to our reality. So and yes, we are starting right from the start, even when you're creating uh, your first Unity 6 project. So uh, I assume everybody here is familiar with this screen. We're looking at the Unity Hub. And when you go ahead and down, um, uh, download your version of Unity 6, make sure that you create a new project, obviously, with it. But uh, since Unity 6 is still in preview, it defaults to 2022 LTS. So make sure uh, to select it. And then make sure that we give it a, pr a proper pro uh, pro uh, project name that you want. I'm going to have something like Unity 6 multiplayer, choose your location. And the reason why I'm even going through such a basic, basic step with you all is because I wanted to make sure to highlight this uh, detail right here. Make sure that when you're connect, um, creating your Unity 6 project, you connect it to the Unity Cloud. That means that if you enable this, it'll automatically be uh, created. A, a project on your Unity Cloud dashboard, which we'll see later, will be created for you. And it'll, it'll be linked up to your editor project. So next step, obviously would be to create uh, create your project. But that takes a little while, so I've gone ahead and done this ahead of time. So I'm going to cancel uh, this process. And 
I'm going to go into right here. This is the most simple template that you're going to get using Universal 3D Render Pipeline, uh, which, by the way, very recommended for uh, using dots and netcode for entities, which today we're going to be focusing mostly on Unity ECS or, uh, or dots. Now, our current goal is that we want to install. We want to get the necessary tools for that kind of shared experience that, you, that we want to create, right? So that means that we need to install some packages. Remember, this project right now has no multiplayer functionality. So let's go ahead, go into our window, go to all package manager, and I'm uh, when, you, when you reach your package manager, search for multiplayer, and you'll find the multiplayer center. Like, uh, a lot of you might have seen this already uh, when we showed it at the keynote, and we're going to go over it in a little bit more detail, a little bit more, uh, more time. Uh, now, one thing to note, since Unity 6 is still in preview, and as of today, this package is on a release candidate, if it doesn't show up for you, make sure to follow this step. Go to, go to uh, these three uh, dots, go to bands, Project settings, and make sure to enable show pre-release package versions. You know, because even though even though the package is still in uh, it's still on release candidate, it's still very much active in development and will be released later uh, later on. Okay, so I'm going to close that package uh, manager window. Uh, I went ahead and installed the multiplayer center for, uh, uh, beforehand. So with that, I'm going to close this window. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead and, and close this project because the next, uh, the next step would be, nope, I jumped ahead, but it happens. Live presentations. Uh, the next step would actually be to show the multiplayer center. I'm really excited to get to the next part. That's what's happening. <laughs> but oh well. Uh, now we're actually using the multiplayer center. And to recap, here we go. The way that was able to access it is by going into Window, Multiplayer section, and we went into multiplayer. And that's what brought me to the, uh, to the window right now. Now, the multiplayer center, like I mentioned, it helps you to choose the necessary tools and packages for the kind of shared experience that you want to create. So the first question that we're going to answer here is, what is the genre? So like, what kind of game do you want to make? And we, high, we bring it out the options. We select on this little drop down, and we have adventure, arcade, you know, shooter sports. Like, uh, many different genres. You can go, I'm going to go ahead and shoot uh, shoes, shooter, <laughs> battle royale, and battle arena. Eventually, we're going to shoot. But yeah. Uh, so one thing to note is that, yes, I am going to choose a particular type of game, but this is to get an idea of what you want to create. It's not like you're tied to this particular genre or to the next uh, piece of information, which is the number of players per session. Uh, we, have two, we have different options, like 2, 4, 8, 16. Now, same thing. Uh, this is to get an idea, but that doesn't mean that in the future you're going to have to make a game for 64 players in every session. No, you could still choose something like 128 and still make a game that is just 2v2 or 3v3 or free for all. So it's up, it's up to you. Now, I chose my uh, high amount of players because we want to eventually get to that, uh, that uh, kind of experience. And the multiplayer center is recommending. Uh, recommending some options based on my choices. Now, remember that Hirsch mentioned that we need uh, something called the netcode layer, right? So that is the first thing that we're going, uh, that we're going to be choosing. And the multiplayer center is recommending netcode for entities. Let me go ahead and uh, zoom in a little bit for folks in the back. Everybody can see back there? All good? Thank you very much. <laughs> OK. So as for uh, as netcode solution, we have different options as well. We have netcode for game objects, uh, netcode for entities, which is the one that we're going to be using today, and custom, or your, you create your own netcode, or no netcode at all. And next to that, uh, we have our hosting model, or the structure, the way that our clients are going to be communicating. And, by, and based on our information, it's recommending a dedicated server. But like Hirsch mentioned, there are different connection structures, or topologies. So we also see client hosted, which was discussed uh, er earlier before. But I'm going to stick for now with dedicated server. And cloud code is another option that is part of LiveOps. Uh, but we won't be uh, discussing that one uh, today in this session, at least. OK. So the next packages are other recommended packages, uh, which we are going to be uh, using today. Uh, Bbox for voice or text chat, the multiplayer services that 
uh, and, ca and capture like many, many UGS services that you needed to install separately before, but you can now access, the, access them through one, uh, one service or one package, sorry. The multiplayer widgets, which are pre-created UI elements that help you manage uh, sessions, uh, lobby sessions uh, for client-hosted games. And uh, last but not least, we also have the multiplayer play mode tools that will help us validate that network gameplay that Hirsch mentioned. So the next step, this is, this is the part I wanted to get to, uh, is to install the, install the packages. And right out of the box, you, we are already getting some acceleration because this will literally start installing everything one by one instead of you having to spend time looking at the documentation, finding out what kind of packages you need to install, and so on. So, but now, here we are in the part that I get to close this window, and I'm going to go ahead and close this project now. I'm going to move forward in time in our uh, development journey, and here we have uh, this project. Now, in this project, let me bring up back again the multiplayer center. Again, this is the same options that we had before, and after you install all those packages, now you have access into the quick start section of the multiplayer center. Here is where you get to add assets, 3D asset scenes, uh, prefabs, some script files automatically for you. So the first step would be to create and open a scene with Netcode setup. So I went or had already uh, imported those assets. Uh, so I, I, would, I would get like this little warning that says, are you sure you want to overwrite it? Like, you already did this, dude. So no, I'm good to go. I did this beforehand. So I'm going to close the multiplayer center for now. And this is the scene that you're going to get when you uh, cl click on that button. Now, very, sim very simple scene. Let go, go ahead and play it. And you see a little bit of text, instructions on how to use it, and two buttons. Remember that, uh, remember that Hirsch mentioned that there was, there was a client-hosted uh, session owner or a host. So that means that, that means that the first step we need to do is to create a network scene, uh, sorry, a network session. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, start host, and we get this little cube that you go ahead and, and move. And I'm going to zoom it over here for this. A uh, little bit of debugging for connection of where we connect it. For those of you, if you haven't seen in the back, that is the local IP address. So that means that the network scene is the net, uh, the network session is currently running entirely on the computer um, when doing this uh, this presentation. Okay. Now it might be a very simple scene right now, but this is already a network scene and is already using the netcode layer and the transport layer and all and all that good stuff. And you're probably wondering, well, uh, Esteban, but you know, where's the second player? Hirsch showed player one, player two, so that means that I gotta give it to I gotta give this project share with somebody else so that they can join me, right? Uh, that could be the case, but no, because I'm gonna go ahead and bring out these this cool little tool called the multiplayer play mode right here under multiplayer center. Now, now the play uh, the play mode tool lets you create thin copies of your project to act as virtual players, so to basically simulate as if another player has joined your session. So, and, you can, and you can add up to three additional players. Let's go ahead and start adding uh, player, uh, player two. Now, one thing I wanted to, know, uh, to note, while that uh, starts setting up and starts creating the, the copy of the project, uh, uh, some of you might notice uh, that there was a scene that was added when we played originally. It was added over here uh, at runtime, and it was this basic setup scene. And thank you, Unity6, for being so fast that you're already done with the player. <laughs> but this scene right here, so for those of you uh, that are familiar using dots, uh, even in single player or, or, or maybe a little bit of multiplayer, um, in, in dots, you need to convert. We're, uh, we're working with entities instead of game objects, and you need to convert those game objects into entities. So, and, and, the, and those game objects that are converted into entities live in these subscenes. And we see in this subscene, that's where the, the little plane where the cube was walking on top of uh, is living, and also this game object called the cube, uh, the, the cube spawner. So that cube spawner has this 
tube spawner authoring script. That is, that means that this object is in charge of spawning the player prefab when you start a network session. And let's look into that player prefab to see what it is, to, to see, uh, to see what's, um, what's it made of. So nothing, nothing super impressive. You know, you've probably seen this a, a, a thousand times before. But here we have uh, our cube that if you go ahead and zoom in our inspector, we see transform, mesh render, mesh render, box collider, all that good stuff. But here we have this component right here, ghost authoring component. Now, this is a component that is part of Netcode for Entities, and it helps you to synchronize data uh, automatically. One of the features, though, uh, so if Hirsch, like Hirsch mentioned, today the, uh, the Netcode layer, think of if, you, if we were to think of it as writing a letter and sending uh, and giving it to the transport layer so that that message reaches to a second player, Think of the ghost authoring component sort of like the pen that's writing that letter. And it's sort of like, it's like the main entry point to start synchronizing um, entities in between, in between devices. So we're not going to dive a little bit uh, too deep into the weeds of how to use Netcode for entities today, but I uh, wanted to highlight and show you that is one of the reasons why this, uh, this, uh, network, this Netcode synchronization is actually working. So our player has been ready for a little while. So let's see that in, a, in action. So here we are in our scene again. And I'm going to go ahead and give this, give this uh, player, player two a little bit of space. I'm going to bring it over here. I'm going to go ahead and double click on the game window to extend it. And now, there we go. That seems uh, pretty fair. Let's go ahead and do what we did before. And let's go ahead and start host like we, like we did before. And we have our little cube, OK? Now on the other one, instead of starting a new session, we don't need to. We're going to go ahead and join an existing session. We're going to start as a client. And, and as you can see, right out of the box, we get confirmation that our synchronization of, uh, of, of uh, transform data is being synchronized in between uh, the two clients. Now, this scene. Uh, like this, you know, this is a cool starting point. Now you can go ahead, and if you wanted, you could go ahead and start it to modify the your player spawner. You can add more behaviors, but all that netcode is set up for you. But this is still connecting locally because this scene is set up to connect directly to a particular IP, and the default value being local host. But I, I want to go farther than that before before I continue on the gameplay. I want to take this scene online so that I can share it with uh, other people, and they can join me uh, as well if they, uh, if they want it. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this scene. I'm going to hide my second player for now. And I'm going to switch gears for a little bit. I'm going to change uh, scenes, because we're going to be using the multiplayer widgets. Now, the widgets, remember, is that package that has those pre-made UI elements that help you create, uh, uh, help you ma manage lobby sessions and uh, connections for client-hosted games uh, or scenes. So uh, after, after you follow the documentation from the widgets, you get to uh, a scene like this. And as, as, you, as you can see, we only see the plane. We don't have the UI to connect. So let's go ahead and create that UI right now. So the same way that you would add, by right-clicking on the inspector, you would, you would create a new game object, like uh, create empty, 2D, or 3D. Now you have a section right here which is multiplayer widgets. And you have these four sections of like create, join and leave, information, and communication uh, in, in a session. So let's go ahead and start create, uh, adding those UI elements. Let's start the, uh, by the first one, by being able to create a session. There we go. Let's go ahead and this seems good enough. Nice. OK. Now let's move that uh, over here. Now let's go ahead and add, uh, keep adding our widgets. Let's create our UI. So uh, if we gave a, a way to, uh, to join a session or create a session, let's do um, leave a session. You know, people should be able to exit a game, get out of a, get out of a, game, a game if they want it. Let's go ahead and keep adding our widgets. I'm going to go ahead and add a quick join session. That is a very useful one, especially when you're first starting out. That means that you can add 
it, you can create a session without, without having to specify a name. And it just gives a random name and uh, connects you and start, starts the session. Let, let's go ahead and from join and leave. Uh, no, I think, oh, there we go. Let's go ahead and add a control that gives me the list of available, uh, available sessions so that if other players join, they can see my session and being able to join it from there. And let's add more information. Let's uh, add a list of players. That'll be that'll be useful to uh, that'll be useful to see like how many how many players and what players are connected in my session, and then let's go ahead and also show like the session code. So if anybody has played multiplayer games where like you can create private or public lobbies, you, and you can share that with a friend or a coworker so they can join you directly, that's what this is uh, for. And you're gonna see uh, session code being created <laughs> later on. So, and last but not least. Let's go ahead and add this control for text chat, because why not? OK. And I think that's good. We have everything we need for being able to create a session, join a session, leave a session, and text chat. Uh, let's bring in our second player again. And this is one of the coolest things. Remember, I changed scenes, and I added new UI elements to it, new game objects. But our second player is already updated. So I don't need to recreate it. It just, as soon as I saved the scene, it went ahead and updated automatically. And it's one of the cool, coolest features. So let's go ahead and play the scene. OK. And we, here we are. Now uh, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit to show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to first click on Quick Join. So it starts uh, creating a session. And here we go. We have our little cube, so similar result to what you saw before. But now, it's connecting online. And it posted the, uh, the session. And, and remember, since I used the quick join, that's why I created like this random, random name. But uh, it, it, it was very fast. And now, in the other player, I'm going to go ahead and refresh the list of sessions available. And we see that, uh, so this would be like a player opening the game and be like, OK, like, who's playing? Oh. This session looks good. Let's open. Uh, there's room for more players. And there we go. Now we see that uh, in a matter of minutes, the value here is that in a matter of minutes, I was able to add all the UI elements, all the stuff that I need in order to connect to players. Now I can go ahead. Uh, we, we can go ahead, and you can. We'll be able to do this as well if you try it to focus more on the netcode fun, on the on the experience that you want to. Uh, that you want to create. Uh, and one more thing, you can also send, you can also send messages like, hello, and reply over here. And right, right out of the box, no code, no, no code, no, no extra uh, uh, work needed to be done. Now you probably might be wondering, because I just introduced text chat, a little bit of uh, toxicity management, we're not, we won't be covering that today, but later on, by the Safe Voice Safe uh, Chat uh, team, there's a session that's going to be at 4.30. So if anybody's concerned about that or they want to uh, find out more, there's, there's going to be a session dedicated to that, in, if I'm not mistaken, also including with a demo. So like I mentioned, I'm going to go ahead and stop playing this scene. If, in fact, uh, let's take advantage of leaving the session. As you can see, like the player uh, list gets, uh, gets uh, updated, and I'm going to leave the session here. And boom, I'm going to stop playing the scene. Now, uh, I, mentioned, I mentioned that now will be the time that you can go ahead and focus more on adding, uh, adding more stuff into your scene. And this is where something like uh, our scene that we showed with Mega City Metro uh, assets uh, is, is good to show. Like This is the same scene that was shown at the keynote. And as you can see, now we have uh, more, stylized, more stylized UI, and we've done a little bit of changes, added, 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 a cool back, added a cool background. Let's go ahead and play, and play, that, uh, and play that. And by the way, bringing in my second player again, and again, automatically updated. Uh, it's, it's, it's super cool. OK, let's go ahead and play the scene. And by the way, this is the same session that Hirsch was demoing right in the keynote. So good job, dude. <laughs> All right. 
So this time, I'm going to go ahead and create a session uh, with a session name. I'm going to go ahead and zoom to show you what I'm doing. I'm going to call it session one. I'm going to go ahead and create the session manually this time, so show you that you can also do it like, like this as well. And if we refresh our list, we see session one available. And now we see that our player prefab used to be a cube. Now it's a, uh, uh, now it's a cool little spaceship. Uh, and the text has the focus, so <laughs> uh, it added everything there. OK, so same as before, we can go ahead and refresh the list of se uh, sessions. And we see the name that is available, session one. We are able to join it. And now we have, now, uh, now we have two spaces flying around. Uh, but with these assets that we're showing, like, it could serve sort of like a cool segue into our next, uh, our, our next demo, moving forward in our development journey where we're going to see uh, the full demo of Mega City Metro. So I'm going to hand, hand it back to Hirsch for a quick recap and for what's up next in the session. Awesome. Thanks, Esteban. So before we switch gears here um, and continue with the next part of the demo, I'm going to give Esteban some time to set that up and also for us to recap what just happened. So in essence, we started from nothing, a blank project, and then we used a multiplayer center to set up our game characteristics and get the right packages and services that allowed us to then take that online with multiplayer widgets pretty easily. And then we validated that actually works with play mode in another instance. So now that we've quickly built this simple multiplayer starter screen, how can we then launch a game to a dedicated game server and connect it with Matchmaker? That's where netcode for entities and multiplayer hosting comes into play. Using this, you can easily build an ambitious multiplayer title that delivers low latency gameplay and with cheap prevention, and you can launch that to a dedicated game server in minutes directly in the editor as well. Once we deploy our game, Matchmaker and our new multiplayer services package, along with additional services, provide everything you need to connect the right players together before, during, and after your game. We're going to be using the Megacity Metro sample from this point going forward, because we just want to show you how easy it is to do these steps with a playable, polished game. So I'll pass it back to Esteban. Nice. OK, and demo time, part two. <laughs> So now we are in Mega City Metro, like when I had uh, opened the project. Now I'm going to go ahead and run this through your point of view as if you were downloading this project for the first time, you know, like right after you clone it from our GitHub uh, repository. So if we go ahead and play our game, this is not immediately going to work. And, ex and this is expected, and it's expected behavior that you'll see. We see a quick message that says, to use Unity's dashboard services, you need to link your project uh, to a project ID. So what, what this is warning is saying is, hey, you need to link up your project. So what we did before, the, the cool thing is that when you're creating a new project with Unity 6, you have the option of doing this already automatically. But since this is from the point of view of downloading a pre-made project, then we're going to have to do this step uh, man manually. But it's uh, very quick and easy, and we're going to go uh, over it right now. So the way that you link up uh, your editor project to a, a Unity Cloud dashboard project, go ahead into Edit over here. We go into our project settings. And in part of the project settings is this little Services tab right here. Now, when you, um, when, after you log in into your Unity account in the Unity editor, that's part of the, that's part of the process, uh, you will, and when you go into this services tab, you will see the list of organizations. And you will have one by default when you create one. But uh, you know, I've had my account for a while, so I, I got a couple of uh, organizations. So I'm going to use this one right here called Unity Developer Relations. It's, it's one we use for our team for many multiplayer demos. And then the next step is the cloud project. Like, what project are we going to link it to? And I have even more options over here. And I'm going to go ahead and choose this one called Unite Mega City Metro. That seems a little bit relevant to what we're doing right now. So the next step would be to go ahead and link your Unity, uh, Unity project to the, to the cloud project. So, And a quick confirmation. And there we go. Uh, our process is set up. Now, the next step 
would be to set our environment variable. So our environment means like in what kind of stage of uh, development we are in our project. So you could have multiple variables uh, like alpha, pre-alpha, beta, uh, or even like the default one, which is production. Now, uh, when um, the default one is good to use it at the beginning when you're testing stuff, it's fine. Uh, but don't uh, don't be uh, distracted too much by this warning. It's a matter of saying uh, it's, since it's assuming that production is where your live product is and your users and your clients are interacting with. It's like, are you sure you want to modify the thing that your players are actually using right now? No, but we are not in that in that state uh, for the purpose uh, for for this presentation. So uh, you can and. And you will not be in that state as well when you just download the project and test to set it up. So we can go ahead and proceed like this. Now, the next step, remember that Hirsch said that uh, dedicated we are going to be using our dedicated servers. And dedicated servers are computers that run our simulation and communicate it back to clients, right? So we're not dealing with client hosted anymore. We need to give that computer those resources, that those files that they need in order to run the simulation and communicate it uh, to the clients. And the way, uh, the way that you do that when you go ahead and download Mega City Metro is that you can go into the, this section called services, and there's this deployment window. Now, you will see that uh, this tool is actually intended for you to actually do that. Like from the editor, you will be able to automatically build, uh, uh, make your server build. So uh, the actual executable file that will run on the servers to, use to, to be used to run the simulation and help set up uh, your dashboard project. And that includes which server, uh, how many servers you want to have, the specification of that machine, and, and the resources, and also where it's going to be hosted, even what regions globally. And how is this window actually, actually fed? Through these files that I'm going to show right now. If you, if, when, you download, when you download the sample, you will have access uh, to a file like this, which will be under Settings, UGS, Game Server Hosting, and this file right here called Game Server Hosting Configuration. And it takes me to this configuration, uh, configuration file, which, uh, which is a YAML file of all that information that I mentioned. The, the build, the name of the executable, the description of a computer, how many computers, and what region. Uh, in the back, can everybody see the text just fine still? OK, thank you. OK, so I'm gonna still going to zoom in a little bit. And this configuration file, the first section is the build, so that means when we go ahead and build our, our, our Mega CD Metro game, uh, what executable are we going to be using and where it's going to be located? So it's going to be built into a builds folder that will be ignored by, uh, by a GitHub repository if you're using GitHub or version control system. So uh, it's OK. And then we have a build configuration. And here we say, what kind of what build are we going to be using? And that's why it has the same name as the build above, Mega CD Metro. And what again, what executable name, what, uh, what file are we gonna, is, is going to be run on the server, some command line parameters, which are very important, uh, like uh, these, these two, the IP address and the port that is going to connect to from the machine, then how many cores of the computer, like, and also how, uh, how fast the CPU is. And all these are modifiable, modifiable variables, and also same as the... Uh, the memory, so how much rem memory in terms of mega, uh, megabytes are you going to, you can, rely, uh, you can rely on, and you can request. Then, last but not least, is the fleet of servers. So, base, so the build configuration is to say what kind of computer with what resources, the fleets is going to be the list of servers of how many of, this, uh, of these uh, computers with these configurations do I want to have, and including in what region. So, uh, we have multiple regions that we can support. If you wanted to add one real quick, you can go ahead and literally just copy paste. And instead of Europe, if I wanted to add Asia, then now I've gone ahead and added uh, Asia as part of the regions that I support. And the reason why I'm putting minimum uh, service available zero 
uh, in North America and Asia, but in Europe one, is because it's recommended when you're first starting, especially if you want to consider like lowering pricing cost uh, for testing and everything, to, at least, to to have a zero servers. That way you don't leave one running. But I want I, uh, we wanted to leave one in Europe because obviously that's the region that we're gonna that we're closest to, and we wanted to have a server available for for a demo that uh, that we're gonna run right now. So after I go ahead and modify that and save it, I go back into my deployment window. And from here, based on the configurations that I have, and as soon as I'm happy with that configuration, I can go ahead and select deploy all. That means that it'll run all the steps uh, automatically, or select uh, uh, which things I wanted to run. And, and, and deploy actually means like upload the new settings to uh, the cloud dashboard. Now, as you probably can guess, I've already gone ahead and, and done this step uh, beforehand because especially when you're building for the first time, as we all know, that takes a lot of time. Now, before running Mega City Metro, I wanted to show you how that would look like for you uh, when you go into your project dashboard. Now, here we are in the project dashboard, and as you can see, this is our Unite Mega City Metro project that I showed before. This is the multiplayer hosting uh, service. And here we have our list of uh, sections for the builds. And as you can see, this has the same one, Mega City, Mega City Metro build that has already been uploaded, uh, uh, uploaded to the service. We have our, our build configuration that contains what build is going to be using, which is this one right here, Mega City Metro. And we also have our list of servers, the fleet of servers. And here we have our regions, Europe, Europe, uh, nope, not copy. Europe, North America, and Asia. Okay. And then, uh, and then after that, you would set up your matchmaker in order to create a game where people's people would go ahead and connect uh, together. And the way that you would do this is by uh, creating a queue for players, which means like the type of game that you want to create. So this is more like the uh, like the player versus player. Uh, type of game that you would do with Mega City Metro, and the instructions on how to set this up are included in the repository when you try it out at home later. But last but not least, let's go ahead and play our game. Shall we, Hirsch? Yes. Heck yeah. Okay. So, moment of truth. <laughs> All right. So here we are in Mega City Metro. As you can see, we don't get that warning before because we've already uh, tied uh, we already tied the project to a uh, a valid cloud dashboard project, and we've already uploaded our resources online. So I'm going to go ahead and give you a better uh, window, uh, sorry, a better, a better view. Going to go ahead and select multiplayer. And when you play Mega City Metro, you have two options. You can connect directly to a particular IP, but we already saw that kind of behavior. But it's similar to like what you saw with the two cubes connecting uh, either locally or to a particular IP. But I'm going to go ahead and use the services, I'm going to go ahead and choose Matchmaker. So I'm going to hit Find Match. And now the Matchmaker service is waking up and telling the service, like, yo, people want to play. Wake up, servers. Give me some resources. And now, Hirsch and I, we are playing together. Uh, and that's him right there. And usually, this is the part where he kicks my butt, because I need to be speaking while I'm also playing a game. Uh, but that's OK. I, I, can I can level the playing field uh, a little bit. Uh, because uh, Hirsch, I don't know, this, this space looks it's very big and all. And we have an amazing city. But it's just like us, uh, the two of us, dude. Like, should we bring more players? Absolutely. Absolutely, right? OK. So one, more, uh, one final thing that, that I wanted to showcase uh, in this demo is that part of Netcode for Entities, this is an additional tool. And this one is actually part of Netcode for Entities uh, in, in particular. But if I go ahead into this section uh, called mul uh, multiplayer, let me zoom in a little bit, and then we go into the play mode tools, we have these tools that are specific to um, ne NECA for entities. And I'm not going to go through all of them like for, for uh, time sakes, but there's this one that I wanted to uh, point at your direction to, which is thin clients. Thin clients are an additional way for you to debug your gameplay behavior. And you can add dummy clients that will run by itself. So 
uh, if I wanted to go ahead and add more players, remember that uh, earlier you could add up to three players, but here you can add much more. So I'm going to go ahead and add something like 20. I'm going to go ahead and risk it and add 20 players. Now, as you can see now, this city is much more populated. <laughs> This seed is much more populated, and now these are the thin clients, these are the dummy clients that, can, that either, they have like this very simplistic random behavior, but it's a good way for you to, t uh, for you to be able to test, um, test your gameplay logic and validate it again. And, but this time, we are validating it with our dedicated servers and our, and our own services. It's like a, like a more real uh, test, much closer to... to something like a live uh, like a live product and i've been destroyed by hirsch again so <laughs> so i think that w uh, i'm gonna keep getting destroyed so i think that i'm gonna end this uh, portion of the demo i'm gonna send it back to hirsch for last words and a uh, quick uh, wrap up so uh there we go handed it back to you awesome you <laughs> thank you Simone. that was fun <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank you and that does make me 3 no's, so we have to run that back. Um, but I just want to take a second to speak more on what you didn't quite see behind the scenes. And that was the multiplayer services package. The multiplayer services package is our all-in-one solution for combining services together. And this happens through the use of sessions and our unified experience across services. So what this means now is that you no longer need to install individual SDKs in your project. Just install the multiplayer service package once, and you're up and running. But what does this actually include? Well, it starts with Matt authentication. Um, you can connect players together across platforms securely, both anonymous and platform agnostic. Matchmaker then provides a fully featured matchmaking service with low latency quickly, and Lobby allows you to connect your players together in minimal time. Relay is added here too, um, and it's also helpful for your more client-hosted games. This is something that we are also actively adding to Mega City Metro, so please keep an eye out as we make updates regularly, and I'll show you how to download Mega City in just a few moments. But that's also thanks to backward compatibility, which makes the transition to Unity 6 that much more easier. And so that brings us to the end of the demo segment. We hope you enjoyed it and were able to follow along, but again, it's helpful to summarize what you saw in front of your eyes. Firstly, we use a multiplayer center and widgets to get a curated list of multiplayer features and services that we took online in pretty quick time. Then we use multiplayer play mode and play mode scenarios to validate and test that our scene actually works all without leaving the editor. In these two steps alone, we did that entirely in real time, right? Yeah. With Netco for Entities and Multiplay Hosting, we launched and deployed an ambitious multiplayer title to get a dedicated game server and then we connected the right players together with Matchmaker. This is how you can accelerate the creation of your competitive action multiplayer game in Unity 6. So come play Mega City Metro at our demo booth. I'm sure you've already seen it, but we've set up the demo booth today with Nintendo Switch, um, with Galaxy phones, iOS, and also on a desktop. Um, and since those of you who may not be familiar with Mega City Metro, since we rapidly accelerate the development of multiplayer solutions in Unity, we get that sometimes it may be doubtful it actually works. So for those of you who don't know, Megacity Metro is our large player scale sample meant to demonstrate how you can get close to a real game production with a small team. And I'm talking about three to four developers in the span of three to six months. That's pretty impressive. And so we did that with um, all based on URP for mobile compatibility and play tests of more than 128 players. And like I said before, we're also excited to announce that you can now experience this game demo on Nintendo Switch and platforms and mobile devices as low as Galaxy S10 and iPhone 11. So this was all done with out of the box features in Unity 6. Here's a quick pick of the team today. We're all excited to come meet you, so come please play out the demo and ask us questions about multiplayer, Unity 6, and we also have a lot of DOTS professionals here as well to answer any of your inquiries. Stick around in this stage to learn more about how you can use distributed authority to build resilient client-hosted games, all with my colleague Lucy. And if you'd like to help shape multiplayer learning courses to help game developers and programmers alike master multiplayer game development in uni, please scan this QR code 
It will just take 30 seconds of your time, but we can help our community out together. Oh, I will go back actually. I'll leave here for one more second. Thank you for those of you that are already taking a picture. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, thank you for listening. Um, please take a picture of these resources um, to learn more about our multiplayer solutions presented today and to get started with ECS and your competitive multiplayer game development. Scan this QR code to get a list of our up-to-date samples, tutorials, docs, and other webinars um, to help you on that journey. So that's it for us. Uh, please let us know if you have any questions. If not, we'll be hovering around outside to just have a chat with you guys.